Appendix R in listen-only mode. Hi, uh, welcome to the Run Sign Up January um, first Tuesday webinar. It's actually the second Tuesday of January, but uh, we figured January first was a good day to have off. Uh, my name is Bob Bickle, and uh, joining me um, uh, tonight is going to be um, Andrew Burke. Um, I'm the founder of Run Sign Up, and Andrew is one of our uh, great developers uh, for the company. So thanks for uh, joining us. Um, tonight, we're going to um, <clears throat> run through some uh, ideas that we see a lot of race directors uh, doing um, to try to promote um, promote their races. And we'll go through some, uh, some examples and talk about some examples. Um, during the session, if you have questions, you can feel free to uh, type them in and, and we'll, uh, we'll respond to those. <clears throat> um, so after we finish about the promotions, we're going to talk about some of the scalability work that we've done, um, which may not be applicable for very many races, but it actually winds up that, uh, that uh, we, we increase performance for everybody. And so we learned a lot of really interesting things. So we'll go through some of that as well for people. So we'll uh, kick right into this uh, age-based pricing. Um, so one of the things that we're seeing is that races are uh, starting to try to figure out how they can appeal to different uh, kind of target markets, if you will. And so uh, one of the nice and easy ways to do this is to try to attract uh, both younger people and older people. Um, and so what you can do is uh, do things like uh, set pricing um, based upon the age of the participant. So uh, say, uh, you know, 12 and under uh, gets, you know, a price of $5 versus the race price, regular race price is $25 or something like that. Um, another way to do that is to go uh, the other way and to go after uh, folks that are in uh, older age groups um, and, uh, and provide them with, with special pricing. Um, in run sign up, this is really easy to do, and you can set multiple different age ranges. Um, as you can uh, see here, an example of uh, 15 and below has a price of $10. And then you can decide, um, because you're giving them a discounted price, do you want them to receive other discounts, and do you want them to be eligible for getting giveaways or, or not? And you can also um, set uh, pricing. Yes. I believe you need to share your screen. Oh, um, I'm not sharing I'm my seeing, screen. I'm still seeing the webinar. Welcome. There we go. Show my screen. Can you see it now? No, I'm seeing it now. Okay. Show my screen. All right. So hopefully you can see it now. Um, there wasn't a whole lot before then, so don't worry. <laughs> um, you can also set... Uh, the uh, um, dates for when you want these different pricing um, specials to be available. Um, so that's pretty convenient. So you can try to target people uh, getting early. The other thing I, I want to mention here, and I think I'm going to carry this theme throughout, is uh, when you're trying to promote a race, try to figure out how you can get to those age group uh, people. And a real nice way is... Um, Try to try to find your local cross country or track coach at the high school and uh, reach out to them. If there's a uh, girls on the run uh, group in your area, uh, try to reach out to them and offer them and let them know that you're you're having this special pricing for for younger people. And and also make sure you you call this out in your regular promotional material because it might entice a parent to bring along a, a, a child or, or something like that. Um, the second idea we'll throw out tonight is group pricing. Um, so the idea of, of, of having a discount for a group of people, um, and we see this a lot uh, for races that want to encourage family-based uh, races. And um, so so you can, uh, in run sign up again, you can, you can set, um, prices for different uh, numbers of people, uh, you know, size of people. In this case, we've set uh, for a family uh, group discount any number of four or more people. 
and we're going to give a discount of five dollars per registrant. So if a family has you know four people or six people, each one of those people is going to get a five dollar um, a five dollar discount off of the regular price of the race. Um, there's lots of different ways to uh, set this. You can set it up on an overall uh, fee, an overall discount for a family. So you could set a discount of ten dollars for a family of four or more. And you can set it at different ranges. So you could set a different discount for a family of four to six or a family of, you know, uh, seven to 10. The other, the other uh, kind of common use of this is, is going after corporations where you might get a group of people registering together. Um, the one kind of downside of that is that um, they would all have to register within the same uh, registration and transaction. And uh, so there, there are other ways to address those types of opportunities that we'll talk about in a bit. But group pricing um, is, a, is, a, is a nice alternative here. And again, um, you can set uh, different ranges of when the, when the pricing is going to be available to runners. Another uh, way to, uh, to offer, uh, to, to offer uh, promotional activity is to use coupons. And coupons basically are uh, quote unquote secret code that gets entered into um, a little uh, coupon uh, box at the end of the registration process and run sign up. And you can create as many of these codes as you want to. And the codes can be kind of any combination of percentage or dollar sign, and they can apply to the race fee or the store. You can set date ranges on them. And then you can you can set um, you know a number of different options. You know, is it used you know per cartload? Is it is there a minimum you know a dollar fee that you want before you would uh, allow that coupon? Um, so let's run through some examples. Um, we see a lot of races using this for elite athletes. So they'll create a coupon code. You know, say uh, the coupon code elite, and it will have a hundred percent discount. And so uh, when, um, you know, known runners that are very good runners or people that, you know, the race is inviting, um, they can be given that special code. And when they register, um, they'll put in all their own information and, and sign the waiver form and everything. But then at checkout, they type in elite and they get their race fee for free. Another example is uh, for sponsors. So you might have a sponsor that has donated you know, a thousand dollars to your race and, and, uh, kind of in, uh, you know, to give them something back, you might give them five entries into the race. So you could limit the usage of the coupon to five coupons at 100% off. Um, and then what you could do is for people additional from say Wegmans gave you the discount. Um, you could give the first five for free, and then after that, you could create a Wegmans coupon that gave everybody from Wegmans that signed up a, a $5 off fee or something like that. Another uh, really, uh, really nice example is uh, uh, if you have a running store uh, near where your race is, is to go, go talk to the owner of the running store. They're typically really friendly and, and really want to encourage racing and try to look for ways where they can kind of combine the racing with, with their own business. And so what you could potentially do is offer them a coupon code for their customers. So they, they might be able to put that up in their store as a physical piece of paper. They might include that coupon code in an email that say they do a monthly email out to their out to their customers they could include a little highlight section for your race and include the coupon code and say you know for you know the our running store customers only you know type in this coupon you know morristown running company and you'll get uh you'll, you'll get five dollars off of off of your uh your entry fee the, the the same is also true of running clubs obviously um, so reaching out to running clubs is, is, is a real great, great way to, uh, to go about trying to, to increase the number of people that are coming to your race and to kind of get that, that social network happening where people are telling other people, Hey, did you see that, you know, everybody in our club gets a, gets a $10 discount if they, if they sign up before February 3rd or something. Um, 
discounts are are kind of like coupons, but they're more public. Um, and uh, the most common discount that we see is that a number of uh, USATF sanctioned races um, to receive the sanctioning, the race actually has to offer a two dollar discount to USATF members. And so um, in Run Sign Up, we've created this and we've kind of pre-populated it um, kind of off the start to, to denote that it's a USATF discount for $2 and that the person needs to type in their membership uh, number. Now, what's, uh, what's nice is that you can, um, you can also uh, you know, change this. So you could make this a military discount, or you could make it a, you know, fire police EMS discount, or you could, uh, you know, kind of do anything. And, and, and the dollar amount, you can, uh, you can also choose to be whatever you want. And then you could put in that additional text field. What that does is it's kind of like a label. And then uh, people would enter the information in uh, next to that label. So you could change that from if you were given a military discount, you could say, you know, branch of the military, and then people would type in Navy or Army or Marines or, or, or something like that. Um, the, the one thing to note on discounts is it's visible to all runners. So um, you can uh, get people that might not be uh, applicable for the discount actually signing up for it and kind of uh, uh, getting the discount. Um, but the other side of it is that, you know, most runners and, and what we found is that most runners are pretty honest when they're signing up for races. And if they aren't a USATF member, they, they really won't check the box to, to say that they are. Um, I, another uh, uh, feature that's really nice is uh, gift certificates. So we've, um, we've uh, uh, recently actually introduced this, uh, this concept of uh, gift certificates into, the, into our system. And basically every race comes enabled with the ability to buy gift certificates. And uh, so if my, uh, if my sister wants to buy me a gift certificate to, uh, to a race, all she needs to do is go to that race, click on buy a gift certificate, enter in my email, and then she'll enter in her credit card information and all of a sudden, you know, I'll get an email saying, you know, uh, your sister just gave you a gift for uh, entering the, uh, the race this Saturday. Um, it's a real nice uh, facility. It's kind of no extra burden to, to anybody and, uh, and it's available to every race. Um, another, uh, uh, thing that is uh, that's really good for promotions we're seeing is, is this idea of m going more and more to the web and, and virtual race bags is a, is a big part of that. Um, there's actually a company called Virtual Race Bags, and they happen to be the leaders in this in this uh, field. Um, and for example, if if you were running the Houston Marathon this weekend, uh, you would be getting a, a little email today you know, saying, here's your virtual race bag. And when you click through on that, you would be able to see offers from sponsors. And what the virtual race bag lets you do um, is, is, uh, is basically for your race, it gives you a way to add value to the sponsors of your race. And it also gives you a way to offer special discounts and coupons and, and offers um, to your runners as well. And so it's a it's kind of a win win for everybody, um, and you know it it also kind of has that um, you know go green type of uh, type of type of uh, benefit to it as well. Um, the other uh, you know thing that I'll note is that we see more and more races kind of moving towards this rather than handing out you know the plastic bags and 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 goodie bags. Uh, it's just harder and harder as the races get bigger and, and more complex, or if, if you're starting a race for the first time, it's, it's a lot of complexity trying to stuff all those bags, getting all the information in, in them, getting all the material in them, figuring out if you can get material from Cliff Bar or Goo or somebody like that to, to, to stick information in. Um, the uh, uh, run sign up and virtual race bags have uh, recently done a, uh, a real nice integration. And uh, 
what it does um, is that it basically sets it up so that virtual race bags can download all of your participant list automatically. So people are registering all the time on run sign up. And what happens is three days before the race, uh, virtual race bags actually downloads all your participant email addresses and sends them automatically the, uh, you know, the virtual race bag, which is a, is a it's a great, it, it makes it easy for race directors, especially the week before a race, you have enough issues going on. And the fact that it all happens kind of magically um, is, is great. Um, virtual race bags does cost money, um, but uh, for run sign up customers, um, you know, you get a 20% uh, discount. So that helps it helps a bit. Um, 2 p.m. this Thursday uh, in uh, two days, we're having another webinar <clears throat> um, that will uh, demonstrate how virtual race bags work and how the integration is done and and how a race director uses it, how how they can set it up, you know, with their different sponsor information. And it will also demonstrate how it looks, you know, kind of on the on the runner side. What are they getting when they open up a virtual race bag? So that that should be an interesting uh, uh, a webinar. So we'd encourage you to to come and see that. So um, Facebook and social media, um, we see uh, races really getting the most leverage from Facebook. And um, and let me go to a Facebook page that that I use for one of the races that that I direct. Um, it's uh, the the Scott Coffee uh, 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 Facebook page. And it's real easy to create a Facebook page in Facebook, um, and uh, you can upload a nice a nice photo like this and kind of your logo, and you can change these things and so forth. And then you can put kind of uh, information up here up front, um, you know, like where do you sign up for the race and, and so forth. And then as people, you know, like it and put comments and stuff like that, you see all sorts of, of nice information there. The, the other recommendation I have is that um, I, what, what we did for our Scott Coffee race this year is, is we actually hired a college student uh, who's a photography major. And we paid him like $100 and he came with his digital camera and he took hundreds and hundreds of shots. And, and we posted these shots up on the Facebook page and people started like tagging them and tagging their friends and and it really got a lot of attention and attraction to the to the race. So, um, so I, I'd really recommend that you uh, take a look at at uh, at uh, doing something like that um, because putting content on your Facebook page is really the the key to getting people drawn in and, and using it and so forth. Um, the two Cooper Norcross uh, Run the Bridge event has had a lot of success on Facebook. One of the things they've done is they've they they put polls up there. So they'll they'll put a poll up um, a few months before the race starts, and they'll ask uh, people to choose from a couple of different designs for the T-shirt, and say three or four different colors for the T-shirt. So you get people that are you know voting and getting involved uh, in in the race, and it's really it's it's really uh, kind of nice. Um, with uh, Run Sign Up, we have a number of different integrations with Facebook. Um, one of those is that when a runner signs up for a race, and if that runner is already signed into Facebook and another you know tab in their web browser, um, we pop up a little uh, message dialog to to suggest that they post the fact that they signed up for the race on the on on their wall, and that way their friends are seeing that they're signing up for the race, and there's some Morality that that happens uh, as a result of that. Um, the other thing that we include in, in Run Sign Up, and you can kind of see it up here under the Cooper Norcross uh, event, is uh, we put up this little uh, different types of ways to uh, tag it in different social media events. And you see this one: uh, Facebook had 417 likes, uh, Twitter only had four, Google Plus only had five. Pinterest had zero, <clears throat> and the share button, which is mostly an email button, had 78. So you see that Facebook is really the dominant um, kind of uh, way to do uh, 
to do sharing and, and uh, take advantage of social media today. Um, keep an eye on everything else, but but that's really the, the thing that is getting the most traction we find when we uh, talk to different race directors. Um, <clears throat> the final promotional thing is, is probably the biggest and most effective thing that you can do. Um, it's email marketing. Um, and what, what we've done at Run Sign Up is try to make this easy for race directors. So, so it's free for race directors. It's, uh, it integrates with, we, we use a uh, partner company called iContact, which is one of the leaders in, in email uh, marketing. Um, and we make it very easy to kind of upload participants into iContact. Uh, we auto log you into iContact. Uh, you can upload other contacts from previous races for free, and then you can choose custom designs. I, I'll just show you a kind of a quick uh, demo of, of where it is and how it, how it works. So if you go into your race dashboard and run sign up, under the social uh, tab and the marketing sub tab, <clears throat> you'll find the eye contact. Um, and what... The way it works is that down here are all the participants from your various races. So, you know, last year in 2012, we had 912 people in the 8K. I could choose that 8K list and then create a list and upload it to iContact. Um, and I'm not going to do that because I've already, I've already done that. What I'll do is I'll click on this go to iContact button. And what this is doing is it's logging me into iContact and into my little account. And I'll be able to see the lists of uh, runners that I have uploaded in the past. Um, and I'll be able to see uh, different, different sorts of things. Um, I can uh, add contacts to this. I can add contacts by uploading from a file or cutting and pasting and all sorts of, of different things. And then once I've got the contacts in there, I can uh, do an email. So I can create a, create a message, and there's a bunch of different ways to do it. One way to do it is to create a, a real simple text-only email. Another way to do it is to follow this message builder, which will uh, give you a bunch of different uh, kind of uh, you know, formatted, pre-formatted templates to, to utilize. Um, and it also allows you to, to share this, um, you know, on your Facebook page and, and things like that. Um, I'm going to, let's see, exit out of that. Um, and then when you, send, when you send your email, it will give you reports and show you, you know, how many people opened it, how many bounces were, you know, occurred and things like that. <clears throat> so this is an email that went out in November. It was opened by 40% of the people. So 2,000 people opened it out of 5,600. And not all, you can't, you can't take that for gospel because some uh, client browsers and email clients don't, don't give you the information. But you can basically see, you know, who clicked on it and, and all sorts of really nice information here. So it's a, it's a tool. It's free. Um, it's easy to use. It's something that, that you, should definitely, uh, you should definitely take advantage of. Um, so, so that kind of finishes up the... Uh, kind of the different ideas that we wanted to share with you and how we see other people utilizing um, uh, different approaches to uh, online registration and to do to leverage that for promotional purposes. Um, the, the final thing I'll talk about here are the, uh, is the scalability work that we did. So we, uh, a couple of us live in the Philadelphia area and there's an annual race called the Broad Street uh, Run uh, that happens in the springtime, and uh, and this past year, um, they limited registrations to thirty thousand people. And what happened is probably fifty to one hundred thousand people hit the website all at once at ten o'clock in the morning when they open up race registration. And the 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 system that they used, it was not us, um, basically became overwhelmed. Uh, started you know, disconnecting and throwing errors, people, if they got 
through part of the registration process. Sometimes they get thrown out in the middle of it. And um, one of our developers, Steven Sigwert, is a, is a pretty good runner. And he really wanted to run this race and he was unable to get in. Like he, he was literally on the computer for five hours trying to get in and, and was not able to get in. And, um, and it took them five hours to <clears throat> sort through the whole process. So um, we became interested in this problem area and, and people have probably seen it before. Like I've seen it trying to sign up for Bruce Springsteen tickets uh, when, he's, when he's coming to Philadelphia or something. There's, there's just, you know, the, the websites become overwhelmed. It's a tough technical challenge. And um, if you know anything about run sign up, we're kind of technology geeks and running geeks. And, and so we like to, you know, look for intersections of that where we can solve hard, uh, difficult technical problems. And so um, because we're built on cloud technology, we can basically grow the number of servers that we have to meet the needs of, uh, of our customers. So what we did, and you can see this here, is we, we created basically uh, test uh, servers that would simulate a runner registering for a race. And then we, able, we were able to increase the number of servers um, so that, uh, so that uh, it could handle the load. And, and basically, we kind of started small. We kept you know, inching up and inching up and kind of running into bottleneck and learning something. And... And, and moving up to the to the next step. Um, in the end, we were, we were able to uh, to do the 50,000 registrations. And you can see the time here, 2.43.05 to 2.48.17. Um, Actually, that was faster than uh, seven minutes. That was closer to five minutes on that run. Um, but, um, and you can see the hourly registrations, 440,000 per hour that we could handle probably higher than that because there's like a startup, a warm up period, and then a, a warm down period in this, uh, in this process. Um, in this side, uh, you'll see that the, um, you know, kind of the average here, the average page uh, return time is that red number, which is around typically, a, you know, uh, a second to two seconds. Uh, the final step winds up being about 10 seconds. Um, out of those 50,000 users, the maximum amount of time anybody had to wait was about 24 seconds. Um, and so, uh, so we were very, very pleased with that. Um, you know, we're kind of unique in the, in, in the registration business in that um, I believe we're the only registration um, system that, that would be able to handle that kind of load with that kind of speed and, and, uh, and, uh, and everything. The other thing that we've done is is we've um, made this such that we can test uh, a, a web service, a, test a, a registration service as well. So if a if a large race is in need of making sure that we can do it, or we could even test someone else's registration system with a heavy load and uh, make sure that that it can uh, it can handle that. If if anyone on the call is interested in that, or anybody watching this post post race is interested uh, just just send us an email at info at run sign up and we can uh, coordinate that with you uh, this is also important on the results side H how many how many people have you know gone and tried to track a friend or tried to see their own results on a on a website afterwards for a big race and and you know it's just non-responsive um, so so we've uh, we also have the scalability there. We've tested uh, at greater than uh, 100,000 results per minute. Um, I think this test here that's showing on these graphs was uh, peaking at about 2,500, 2,700 uh, requests per second. Um, and you can see the the graph down on the bottom left um, has uh, average response time for most of the pages. Is about a half a second, and for some of the pages, it's about a second. So, so very fast response time. And then, um, you know, the the graph at the upper left shows the maximum amount of time anyone had to uh, wait out of those. Uh, I think it was 120,000 users um, uh, had to wait was about 10 seconds. Um, so, so really fabulous stuff. And uh, and I'll take the opportunity just to just to highlight our race results uh, capability. 
Um, and, uh, and this is great because if you get your timer's native data file, they can upload it. Or if your timer is a run score or a race director um, software user, those packages now also automatically um, uh, upload the uh, upload the results. So this is th this is what results look like in, in run sign up if I if I upload the data, um, and we do things uh, like calculate the pace for people, and then there's this uh, really cool formula you you probably have seen it if you're around road racing much. Um, where they do age-based scoring. So because this guy was 37 years old, he's got a, a very high age percentage, uh, even though this guy ran pretty close to the same time, but he's a lot younger. So, um, so the age percentage basis is, uh, is higher. So we calculate all that. Um, the, you know, we can show any number of uh, results per page. Um, you can do uh, Google-style searching here. So I could look for anybody that was from Morristown, and you can see that it does autocomplete. So I can look for people in Morristown, and then I can I can build queries so I can look for uh, for people named Joe who lived in Morristown, and there's three of them. So this is really cool for for people that are that are searching and and looking for uh, for race results um, after your race. <clears throat> Um, that's all we wanted to cover, uh, for this evening. Um, don't know if there are any questions out there, but, uh, happy to answer, uh, any questions if, uh, if anybody has anything. <clears throat> we'll take, uh, just another minute or two, see if there's any questions and then we'll, uh, go ahead and, uh, wrap it up. Here's a question. Um, someone asked about the results, and is there a way to um, do notifications? Um, yes, there is. Uh, this is something that got introduced a little while ago. Um, so <clears throat> the way it works is that uh, during a um, oops uh, during uh, before a race is uh, before a uh, when people are, are signing up for a race, let's go to this race. <clears throat> and um, there are people signed up for this race that's happening in, in uh, 2013. What you can do is you can uh, click on, uh, on Bob Bickle there and you can set a notification to either be notified via text message on cell phone or by an email address. Um, and it's just that simple. So friends and family could could set up to watch uh, their fellow racers, or someone who was racing uh, that day could um, get notifications sent to their cell phone. So if your timer is set up to have internet access, during the race, um, he can basically upload and keep uploading results. Um, and as soon as those results are appearing on the Run Sign Up website, um, the runner is getting or the runner's friends or family are getting notification for uh for uh getting that so the, the same type of features that you get at these big huge road races is now available to you know any simple 5k and it's it's quite easy to use and especially if your timer uses run score or race director which are the dominant platforms for uh for timers to use it's uh kind of a click of a few buttons for them to be able to post this information up so uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, good question. Uh, I don't see any other questions right now. So uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, go ahead and, and end, the, uh, end the webinar. And uh, thank, you, uh, thank you very much. Oh, I, I'm not sure if I'm still on or not, but I see uh, two other questions um, popped up. <clears throat> um, I'm not technically oriented. Do you think this in turnkey service, i.e. help with Facebook? We're always available to help out. 
um, and uh, you know, send us email or give us a call and, and things like that. It's uh, it's pretty easy stuff to use, and once you get used to it, it, it you'll uh, you'll you'll learn to to like it a lot. I think uh, pricing is available on our website. Is the other uh, big question? Um, you know, just uh, run signup.com slash pricing. Um, uh, real quickly for uh, uh, races under ten dollars, it's a two dollar processing fee. Races. $30 and under, it's a $2.50 processing fee. Race is $50 and under, it's $3. And above that, it's a simple 6%. So uh, quite a bit less than active.com. And among the leaders um, in terms of uh, pricing, there, there are a few places that you get it. If you developed all this stuff yourself, um, you can do it cheaper on PayPal. But um, there's a lot of functionality here, obviously. And that's how we, that's how we make, uh, make our money. Um, as a side, as a side note, um, all of this is, uh, is available for, for free. So, um, so, uh, in terms of, um, of, uh, results and things like that. So you could utilize run sign up and post results actually without having any cost incurred uh, at all. All right. Um, thanks very much for, uh, attending.